It's Thursday, July 26th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we are riding the Silver Express at the Senior Center. We learn more about the free boat pump-out service in our harbors, talk trash at the transfer station, and commemorate the 65th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. But first, let's start with some news you can use. Governor Charlie Baker has signed H. 4516, an act relative to the Municipal Police Training Fund, which will allow the Municipal Police Training Committee to conduct additional recruitment and training that will give local police critical tools needed to ensure the safety of Massachusetts residents and communities. The MPTC is responsible for training and setting training standards for local police, University of Massachusetts Police, and State Environmental Police. This legislation will allow the Municipal Police Training Committee to maintain critical services and expand training, including first aid training, first line supervision, field training, sexual assault investigator training, school resource officer training, and instructor training courses. The Friends of Barnstable Council on Aging are continuing their commitment to easing the transportation challenges of our senior community by leasing a new hybrid Toyota Camry for the Senior Center Silver Express program. Channel 18 met the new car in the parking lot to learn more about the program and this valuable resource. So in 2015, we had the opportunity um, through the town to lease an electric vehicle um, at a heavily discounted rate. Uh, there was a $7,500 rebate from um, the state DEP as well as a $7,500 rebate from the, um, the dealer. And so we were able to um, engage into a three-year lease for a Nissan LEAF electric vehicle for a total cost of about, it was less than $5,500, which we saw as a win-win. Um, because what the electric vehicle allowed us to do was to reduce the overall costs um, of running the transportation program, um, given the fact that the handicapped accessible vans that we run are very um, heavy on, on fuel, um, and also with maintenance. Um, the, the electric vehicle offered us an opportunity um, to provide tra our transportation services to um, older adults that really don't need to have the handicapped accessible transportation that the vans provided. Well, after we saw what an enormous asset it was to uh, the seniors here for, for all their transportation, for their transportation needs, um, we could see what a huge difference it made for them. And so uh, when the time came that the LEAF lease was up, we were already looking forward to uh, what the new car would be. And uh, uh, we were just so excited about it that they, that they would continue it. And at one time we thought, well, would we keep the lease and, and, you know, and buy it? And it was just decided that we really needed a vehicle that could do both because the, lease, the LEAF was limited to uh, how far it could really go. So to take some of the stress out of that to the drivers, uh, we thought that having both the, the, uh, the hybrid um, was definitely the way to the go. The new Camry um, runs on electricity um, that's generated by gasoline. Uh, it goes 55 miles to the gallon, but I think we're doing a little bit better than that. Um, and uh, the cost of it is, uh, so much less than trying to drive a van. I, we do have two vans, but we use the second one only as a backup. About a year or so um, ago, we had started planning, um, knowing that we were in the final year off the, the lease for the Nissan LEAF. Um, and some of the things that we talked about, um, you know, that we felt that this was such a wonderful enhancement of the program that we definitely wanted to continue um, to utilize an electric vehicle. But the LEAF only ran on the electric charge, so one of the things that we wanted to do was introduce a hybrid vehicle, which would give us a little bit more um, um, ability to provide longer distances because when the charge runs out, um, it will actually um, uh, convert over to gas. Um, so that was a benefit, and we also felt like we needed a larger vehicle that was more comfortable for the clients that we transport. And so we were able to um, find a lease working with the purchasing department um, for a 2018 Toyota Camry. Um, luckily, our friends group, who were so supportive um, of the initial three-year lease and really understood how important this was to us in providing a vital service to um, seniors in our community that can no longer drive themselves to get to appointments in the grocery store, in the bank, and to the senior center, to our day program here, 
um, they, they fully supported um, continuing um, having an electric vehicle and they agreed unanimously to fully fund the three-year lease on uh, the Toyota Camry which came to just over $9,000. Um, it's very convenient for the drivers and the, and the clients. Uh, they enjoy the fact that they're closer to the driver and to each other and they communicate with each other more freely than they would if they were in the van and spread apart by bigger seats and everything. Um, the, uh, we have volunteers that drive the Camry and, um, and the volunteers are more apt to volunteer to, to drive the car than they would the van. I still need people to drive the van if possible and I, but I still need some backup for the for the um, uh, Camry also. Uh, we use the uh, the Camry to for doctor's appointments mostly, and our adult supported day program. We use it in the morning and the afternoon, and that was one of the things with the Leaf uh, Nissan Leaf was that we couldn't run it all day long. We had to have it off around noontime so it could charge up again for the afternoon. In order to support the adult supported day program more, we needed to have a second vehicle to be able to transport um, uh, our, you know, our clients to, to the program and home from the program. If you, if you are interested, if you're a senior over 60 years old or disabled adult, you can call for a ride here at the Senior Center at 508-862-4752 been really um, beneficial to us for the last month or so we've had the Camry it's now in action it's out there on the roads throughout our seven villages every day and our clients um, as well as our volunteer drivers and the board members of the friends who voted to support it are all in love with it and it's just been um, a wonderful a wonderful enhancement to our program we're just pleased and proud to be able to help you know our seniors here that's what we do and we love doing it so uh, um, I'm very happy about it. I'm really, I'm really thrilled, and I'm glad we're able to do it. The town of Barnstable has a free pump-out program for vessels, and Assistant Harbor Master Jared Smaller takes us out on the water to show us how easy it is to get your boat pumped out. A gorgeous day on Katua Bay. We are jumping on board with Jared Smaller, Assistant Harbor Master, and we're going to go pump out a boat. This is a free program to boaters here in Barnstable. Um, Jared's going to tell us a little bit about the program, and you're going to see it live. It's already tied up to the boat. Uh, we open the, always wear gloves and eye protection. Get the cap open. Forward in the compartment here, we have our hose. This boat has a fully electric pump, as does the other one. Pumps. Pump out boats use a diaphragm style pump that essentially right from your boat into the holding tank. Put this on with cam lock levers. Make sure it's closed so that we don't have anything happen initially. Turn it on. <clears throat> then slowly open the valve. sight glass that shows what's coming through and right now there's actually not too much in this boat so right now it's just cycling through what it's got there so that's pretty much done um, if the tank on this boat was full it would probably take about 90 seconds to two minutes for it to pump it all the way out close the lever before we open anything else up so that we don't discharge anything
that's essentially how the pump out goes. Nice and quick and clean as you can see it's there's nothing that leaks out. It's a completely sealed system. And the final step that we do is we leave a business card on board that does have all of the information for the pump out program. They have our phone number and the email address for the pump out program, so if you need service. And we put the date and the time and who pumped your boat. So when these people come back on board, they can see that their pump out was done and their boat's all set and the holding tank is ready for the weekend. How important is it for the environment to do this on a regular basis and not uh, get your tanks too full? Um, the tanks are really, they're a sealed tank, so unless you have a failure in the tank, there's not going to be any leakage for the most part. Um, it's a good service because A, it's free and it's funded through state and federal grants, but it's also just our environment. I mean, the water is a huge resource here in the town of Barnstable in many ways recreationally and commercially. Um, right over all through this area is a huge shell fishing area. That the last thing we want to do is be pumping sewage into it. Um, you know, it leads to neurovirus and all kinds of other things. Right. So it just so and it affects the ecosystem and what we are as a town and as a region. Right. And I know that the we're here at the Katuit um, uh, town dock, but where else is this service available? This service is available town wide. Um, we have a boat here that services primarily the Three Bay area of Catuit Bay, North Bay, and West Bay. And we also travel to Hyannis to offload. And then we will also stop in East Bay if we need to. Uh, we do have one regular customer over in East Bay. And then we also have another boat that's in Hyannis that services the Lewis Bay and Hyannis Port area. And that boat can come over here. This is a busier area because it is larger for us. Sure. Um, that boat can come over here. We had a really busy day that needs to supplement. And then we have two shoreside facilities in Hyannis, both at Bismore Park. And then we have another shoreside facility in Barnstable Harbor because there just isn't as many boats. There aren't as many boats that need pump outs over there. Right. So the shoreside facility works well for us. Okay. And the actual um, uh, ability for people to, uh, you know, call and email on a busy weekend, what's kind of the time frame for folks? Should they, you know, kind of anticipate getting the, the pump out? or? Yes. It's always better if you can anticipate and plan ahead for it. Uh, that gives us the opportunity for any weather issues. Uh, yesterday it was really windy that if we wanted to do this yesterday I would have tried to reschedule because it was just too windy. Right. Um, we definitely don't want to cause damage to a customer's boat, to our boats. We don't want to get anybody hurt. There's too many opportunities for bad things to happen if it's a really poor weather day. Uh, wind and lightning are our biggest deterrents to being able to do this. Okay. But. <clears throat> It also allows for staffing changes and other things that may come up that need to take a priority. So we would like a few days notice if possible, but when we're out here on the weekends, that's what we're out here to do. Um, these boats, although they can respond to emergencies and they're fully equipped to handle any of that stuff, the primary purpose of these boats over and above anything else is pump out. Um, again, they're funded through grants and as part of that, there's to be used for pump out. So. These boats are out here to pump your boat okay. all the time. And let's just take it to the conclusion. Sure. Once it lands in this boat in the holding tank, <laughs> where does it go? This boat will then go to Hyannis. Um, okay. We'll take it by water. Okay. And we will use one of the two stations over there. And mm -hmm. then from there, that there are two pumps over there. They're called peristaltic pumps. They just operate on a different style. A little bit heavier duty. Um, because they have a lot further to draw everything from between emptying a 450 gallon holding tank on this boat into the town sewer system. So it goes right into a pumping station that's there at Bismore Park and ends up right in the town sewer system. Excellent. And our north side station as well pumps right from this tank there into, a, into the town sewer system as well. So everything okay. is treated properly. It ends up just where it would if they were flushing right. the toilet at your home. And where it should go. Exactly. Exactly. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Recycling changes at the transfer station has PJ Kelleher talking trash. Separating tin and aluminum in your recycling is now in effect. Yeah, starting July 1st to separate out 
steel, tin, aluminum, food cans, beverage cans from the single stream recycling and uh, looking to market that a uh, different way. Well, when it first started, we had a zero cost on our recycling being hauled away by our vendor. And at the beginning of, the, beginning of this year, we've now started to have to pay over $95 a ton for our single stream recycling to be hauled out and baled and separated and moved on in the market. Taking out the uh, metal, essentially it's just the metal cans, taking them out of the single stream will lower the weights that we're sending out the door when we have our containers hauled out. For every ton of weight we can remove, it's less money that we have to end up paying out and we can convert that ton into money that may be able to come back to us as a, um, a rebate instead of a cost. All right, uh, with the separation of the tin cans, steel cans that we're looking to do, they are ones like a food can, soup, uh, sauces, most of them come in that. Uh, tuna cans is another example. Uh, beverage cans that come in, pineapple juice sometimes comes in a can. Things like that is what we'll be looking to separate. We will have a new container set up with uh, updated signage to let everyone know where you want to put it. Uh, aluminum cans that soda and Alcoholic beverages come in, those still have a deposit, and we do have the deposit shed with local charities at the end of the recycling line, which that can always be put in there, and that goes to a good cause every time. Tomorrow is the 65th anniversary of the Armistice Treaty ending the Korean War. The Cape and Islands Korean War Veterans Association will be commemorating the occasion at 10 a.m. Friday, July 27th at Veterans Park in Hyannis. We discover more about this event with Larry Cole. Remembering Korean War veterans, the 65th anniversary of the armistice is coming up July 27th. Larry Cole, you are with the chapter of uh, the Cape and Islands uh, Korean War Veterans Association. This is a big anniversary for folks, for you. It's the 65th. Uh, and we're all in our 80s, and this is likely the, the last time we were able to uh, mount uh, and, and conduct a ceremony. Right. Um, and it's also uh, at uh, a very special time with the negotiations going on between the United States and North Korea over right. its nuclear capability and its intercontinental ballistic missile capability. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in that connection, we're very fortunate to have as our speaker uh, the South Korean Consul General in Boston, uh, who's a diplomat with 30 years of experience, uh, including assignments representing Korea in New York and Washington and Iran. Uh, but more to the point, he had a couple of assignments at home uh, in a, a government agency that was responsible for thinking about uh, and, and coping with the nuclear threat from the north. So if anyone is uh, qualified to, to make comments about the current negotiations, uh, it would be him. And uh, we locals are going to refrain from it <laughs> under <Right>. the circumstances, <laughs> sure. except uh, to express hope that the agreement to resume the repatriation of remains of American military personnel from North Korea, whether they're MIAs or POWs who died in the camps. We're, we're very hopeful that will resume. Okay. Um, this commemoration uh, is special in a couple of different ways. It's going to be held July 27th at Veterans Park. Right. Uh, it starts at 10 a.m. But there's something uh, uh, with the town that this is a, a special, almost a, a handoff, per se. Yes. Uh, we started planning for this event a couple of years ago. Uh, and we thought it was time to not only commemorate the anniversary of the truce, but it was time for us to hand over to the town ownership of and responsibility for care and maintenance of our monument. Uh, in the future when we're no longer physically able to do so. Um, and then, so in 2016 we started thinking about it. And then in the winter of 2016-17, we lost six members in a matter of a few weeks. And a couple of them were guys who had fairly regularly attended our monthly meetings. And so we started, our commander at the time said, 
maybe we think about, should think about having the handoff in uh, July of 2017. And so we did have a ceremony, and it turns out to have been a symbolic handoff because the negotiations that we had uh, started with the town uh, to arrive at a, a legal agreement uh, were, were not complete. So we went through with the symbolic handoff last year. Um, the, the agreement was signed in February of this year. And as the agreement specified, and as we have intended all along, uh, we handed over $12,000 to the town uh, from uh, an earmarked memorial account that we had for specifically that purpose. And we're going to hand over another 13000 in October when a second CD matures. But during the ceremony, there will be a, a simulation of a, a financial handover with a, a large mock-up mock check mm -hmm. uh, being handed from our treasurer to the town's treasurer. Okay. Um, and what that money goes to is it augments a trust fund that's been in the custody of the town since 2000 and was established uh, by a donation from Barnstable County of $25,000 for this future care and maintenance. And the, the trustees of the trust fund have more than doubled that. There's been very few expenditures from it. There was a flagpole that got damaged in the winter storm that had to be replaced. Flags have to be replaced, the plantings occasionally. Uh, so there's a, there will be approximately $75,000 in that perpetual care fund. And so there, while the town is taking on the responsibility, there should be no burden on the taxpayers of, of the town. Right. That's a, 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 when we think about, you know, where does our money go as, as taxpayers, um, I, I would uh, think and speak for some of our taxpayers to say that we would have carried that burden always for well, and, the and service and sacrifice that Korean veterans have made for our country. Well, we're very grateful for the location. I mean, that's a spectacular site. Right. Uh, there's also an American Legion uh, monument there, a memorial. Uh, and in the past, the town has talked about aggregating some other memorials that are scattered around so that they're all in Veterans Park. Right, and, and it's a great spot. It's a great spot for reflection as well, the JFK Memorial Day yes. as well. So yeah. July 27th at 10 a.m. Can you walk us through the, so you're going to have your speaker, the Consul General from uh, South Korea, yeah. who's uh, in Boston. Um, and will there be other speakers for that? Yes. Uh, with a ceremony of this kind, we have, we're fortunate to have four, possibly five color guards, uh, including one from the uh, local police department, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, Marine Corps League Detachment 125, and possibly a Massachusetts Air National Guard if they don't have cemetery duty somewhere that day. Sure. Uh, so it would begin with the uh, posting of the colors and then the Pledge of Allegiance, an invocation by the chaplain, uh, uh, some introductory remarks by our commander, Roy Thomas, explaining the significance of the occasion. Uh, and then uh, Eric Steinhilber, the uh, president of the Barnstable Town Council, will uh, bring the greetings of the town. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then uh, the consul general. And then a, a kind of an element of local flavor that occurred at the last moment, and we're delighted, is that the uh, artistic director and conductor of the Cape Symphony, a Korean-American, Chung Ho Pak, is going to speak for just a few minutes to explain what it has meant to him, uh, a Korean-American born in the U.S., uh, that American soldiers uh, intervened and came to the aid of, of South Korea in the 1950s. Uh, and then we have uh, just a couple of brief eulogies for past commanders and, and, uh, and members who have uh, departed since last year. Okay. Um, and that will wind it up. It sounds like a very moving ceremony. We're, we will be there, and I'm uh, delighted that Jung Ho Pak will be there. Um, he's I, an I, eloquent I, speaker, and I know this means He reminds a lot us every day that we're living in the key of Cape Cod. <laughs>
If you listen to the classical <laughs> radio station, that is. The key of Cape Cod, you're yeah. absolutely right. Well, yeah. Larry, um, you know, this event, again, July 27th at 10 a.m. at right. Veterans Park, right at the memorial. Anything else you want our viewers to know? Well, I just the reason for 10 a.m. is that's the time when the uh, armistice was signed at Panmunjom uh, in 1953. And then the ceasefire took effect at 10 o'clock that evening. Oh, my goodness. So yeah. 10 o'clock uh, is a significant... <coughs> yeah, 10 o'clock in the morning, yes. My right. Goodness. Their time. Their time. <laughs> right. Still. <laughs> All right, then uh, we will see you next Friday um, right. at the ceremony. And thank you so much for your service. Well, thank sir. you for having me and, and giving us an opportunity to uh, preview and promote. And I want to express my thanks to the town for all the support uh, in arranging. Lynn Point from uh, Director of Community Services has uh, been an enormous help to us. And again, we appreciate the location and the support from the town for, mm -hmm. for keeping things looking very good down there. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The community calendar. Remember Fridays are for live music on the Hyannis Harbor. First up is live lunch at the Shanties down at Bismore Park with Burt Jackson, and then come back in the evening to Asselton Park for a rocking good time at the Hyannis Harbor free concert series with the Brian Sansas Band. Get all the details and plan out your weekend at www.artsbarnstable.com. Comments, suggestions, accolades? Connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.